This is a violin by Antonio Stradivari, made in 1685. At this point, Stradivarius was 41 years old, and he was two decades, over two decades, into a career which would last until the 1730s. He was still making instruments well into his 90s, which is extraordinary by any standards. Uh, this is a unique instrument. It's the only one surviving of its kind, of the 600-odd uh, Stradivari which survive, because it's a small violin. I wouldn't say a piccolo violin, but perhaps you could call it a soprano violin. We measure the sizes of violins from the back length, the distance from here to here, and a traditional size violin is about 350 millimetres long from here to here, that's about to there. This is 325 millimetres long. As you'd expect, the front of the violin is made from spruce in cut in two pieces, and the back is maple, like the sides, also a two-piece back. It's in extraordinarily good condition, which is the result of it having been in a collection since the end of the 19th century. It's never really been, in the past 150 years anyway, it's not been a player's instrument, which accounts for the amazingly pure golden varnish on the back. This violin also speaks to the relationship between makers. Uh, when I first met it, about three years ago, I was astonished to recognise the scroll, that's this bit here, which was clearly not by Antonio Stradivari, but one of the Amati family, which is not surprising because in 1684, when Niccolo Amati, the greatest of the family, died, it was Stradivari took over the contents of his workshop in Cremona. So it's very likely that this scroll was kicking around and it's either by Niccolo or perhaps his father, Hirolamo, and you know, craftspeople don't like wasting things, and so he incorporated this exquisite scroll, which I would guess dates from probably about 50 years earlier than the violin, into this beautiful instrument. There's a lot of question as to what violins like this are or were for. It wasn't until the 19th century that we started seeing evidence of child's violins. For a child to play a smaller instrument, they just began higher up the instrument and worked down as their, their arms got longer, if you like. This is more likely to have been made for the use in the top end of what we'd now think of as of a consort of instruments. In the 17th century, when this was made, you didn't climb around the instrument to get higher, you simply took a smaller instrument, like taking a piccolo instead of a flute. So this instrument was made to be used in lighter, higher registers, there's also another aspect to this, which is to do with the way that we tune the instrument. Manufacturing it small means that the table is stable. Um, if you have the larger size top to the instrument, when you change the tuning instrument, it flexes around a lot, and it means it doesn't like it. This instrument benefits from the slight rigidity of having a top which is two and a half centimeters shorter than the normal top, which means you can use it for different tunings in the same concert, which was widely used in the 17th century. And that's what I'm doing in this little series of films of pieces written pretty much around about the same time this instrument was made. The pieces I filmed here use the traditional G, D, A, E tuning, like this, then a simple change, this is G, D, A, D. And you'll notice that even when I'm plucking it like this, each of these changes the colour coming from the instrument. A more dramatic change, such as this. So this is G, D, A, C. Which darkens the top of the instrument in sound. And one other tuning I'm going to use today We go to basically tuning, which is an A major chord. So that's an A, E, A, C sharp, which immediately gives the instrument a lute-like quality. The interesting thing about this violin, and this is speculation, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's something to this, which is that I've just changed the tuning four times, and it doesn't mind that much. The exciting thing in playing 17th century music 
is often the music written for solo violin exploits these different colours from these different tunings in order to find the character for the piece itself.